Hello everybody, I'm David. And I'm Paul. And we're from thedicereview.com. And today we're going to be taking a look at Get the Cheese from Stronghold Games. Since the dawn of cheese, mice have wanted to eat cheese. And since the dawn of cats, cats have wanted to catch mice. And dogs have wanted to chase cats. So in the three to five player game, Get the Cheese, we're trying to do exactly that. Eat cheese with our mice, chase mice with our cats, and chase cats with our dogs. Uh, the player who can do that most effectively by playing their animal cards will be declared the winner. So before we go over the setup of the game, we want to give a quick overview of the cards that each player will have in their deck. Each player will have a number of regular mice, a couple of big mice, one king mouse, two cats, and one dog. These terms will be used throughout the explanation, so it makes sense to show you these up front. So now we'll talk a little bit about setup. Setup is almost done here on the table. Every player will take their 15 card deck of cards, shuffle them and place them face down, and then they will take a home card which depicts their player color. After each player has taken their cards, you'll need to set up the play area in the middle. It's different depending on how many players you have. We are going to set up as if we're playing a three player game. And in a three player game, six cards are dealt in the middle of the table. They need to be shuffled first, and then you will form a circle with the cards. After the cheese cards have been dealt to the middle of the table, the remaining cards will be placed in the box. Finally, each player will draw three cards to make up their starting hand. After this, we're ready to play, so we'll talk about the different actions that you can take on your turn. Next, you'll determine the first player by deciding which player ate cheese most recently. It was definitely me, so I'll go first this time. That cover's set up. Now we're ready to play. On a player's turn, they can take one of two actions. They can either draw three cards or play three cards. The draw three cards is pretty straightforward. You just choose to draw three cards from your deck. You can only draw if you have fewer than six cards in your hand. In other words, the hand limit is six cards. If you already have six cards in your hand, you can't take the draw cards action. The next action that you can take on your turn is playing three cards from hand. To do that, you'll be placing three cards around the edge of the circle in the middle of the table. You can pick any card to start with. So for instance, I could play my first card next to this three cheese card. The first card is played face down, and the next two cards must be placed adjacent in clockwise order, and the two cards must be played face up. So for instance, if I played this card, that would be my next placement, and then my third placement would be right here. Now, there is an exception to placing cards face up. Some cards will have a face down marker on the card. It's basically a picture of the back of the card. If the card has that on the front, you get to place this face down, even though it's one of your second or third cards to be placed. I'm going to take a placement action as well. Now, in doing so, I'll illustrate a few rules about placing cards. If you place your card on a cheese that has a card on it already, you cover up that card slightly, but leave them splayed so you can see which color cards are on that location. Since that was my first card, I placed it face down. I also have a card with a face down icon for my second card, so I can play this one face down as well. And my third card will get placed here, face up. Once a player has either drawn three cards or played three cards, their turn is over. Play will continue in this fashion until each player has taken exactly nine turns. Once every player has run out of cards, the game end is triggered and we will resolve each cheese card and we can begin scoring. And now it's time to resolve the cheese cards. The first thing you want to do when all players have finished playing their cards is turn all the cards face up. It's important to keep them in the same order, but they do need to be face up so you know which cards do what. The cheese cards will be resolved one at a time. It doesn't matter which order you start or which card you resolve first, you just resolve one and then you move to the next. So now we'll talk about how each of the different animals is resolved when you're scoring the cheese card. The animals act in a certain order. First is dogs. Now we don't have an example of this, but if there are multiple dogs in the line, 
you start with the ones at the end of the line and move your way in. And the way the dog works, we have an example here. It will scare any cat in front of or behind it by one space away. Since this is my dog, he scared both of these cats and I'll get to take these two cards and put them on my home card. The dog will stay in the line, but during the resolution of the cheese card, the dog will be ignored because these dogs don't eat cheese. After removing those two cards, there are no cats or king mice left in this line, so all the other mice will get to advance and eat. Since this cheese has a number four on it, there's enough cheese to feed all three mice. Those mice will go to their respective players' home cards. So this cheese has been resolved, and we'll move on to another example to show how cats work. So the next animal to act would be cats. After you resolve the dogs, you will resolve any remaining cats. Now, for this example, we've set up a line that has multiple cats so that you can see how they're resolved. When resolving cats, you use the same rule as when resolving dogs. The cat at the end of the line is resolved first. So in this instance, the yellow player's cat, which is David, would be resolved first. Now, the rule for cats is that they will eat any mice up to three spaces away heading towards the cheese. The only hiccup to that is that if a cat encounters another cat or the cheese, it is interrupted and stops. So in this example, David's cat would be able to eat one of my mice, but then encounters Red's cat. So it has to stop there, and this card would go away. The next cat to be resolved in this line would be the red player's cat. Now there are three mice in front of this cat, but one of the mice is the red player's mouse. So you still count these mice when counting distance, but this one is not consumed. So in this example, the red player would catch this mouse and this mouse, but this one would stay in line because this mouse is of that player's color. So these two would go over here, and then this mouse would stay in line. At the end of this resolution, the cat would be removed. The last cat to be resolved is right up against the cheese, so it has no mice in front of it to capture. This one would just be removed. After all of the mice have been resolved from this line, the two cards remaining are two mice, which can be fed from this five cheese card. So the red player would be able to collect these mice. They have been fed. The next animal to act would be the king mouse. Once again, we've set up an example to show you the benefits of the king mouse. When resolving a line of cards with a king mouse in it, the king mouse moves to the very front of the line. So Paul's king mouse moves up here first. There are no cats or dogs in this line, so we can go ahead and resolve the mice. Unfortunately, this cheese can only feed two mice. Since Paul had the king mouse, both of those are his. The rest of the mice would then be removed. They didn't get to eat. During our scoring examples, we showed all the possibilities of how the animals will react. So what we did is we went ahead and resolved each cheese card on the table. Once that's done, each player will then take and add the number of points that are printed on their cards. So for an example, each regular mouse and king mouse will be worth one point, each big mouse will be worth two points, and each collected cat will be worth three points. After adding up all the points, if there's a tie, the player who collected the most king mice cards is the winner. If there's still a tie, the player with the most mouse cards total is the winner. And if there's still a tie after that, the victory is shared and everyone rejoices. And that's Get the Cheese. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed the video and we hope that it was helpful. If you'd like to see any more content from the Dicey Review, you can check us out at thediceyreview.com or see our YouTube channel. You can also find our guild on boardgamegeek.com. And you can listen to the podcast. You can find the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or anywhere you find podcasts. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.